Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jacob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. In this episode, we're having a look at 11 AUM features that are easy to miss. AUM is such a powerful platform and there's so many features in there. It's absolutely full of features and some of them are kind of hidden. Now, for those of you who are pro AUM users, who use AUM on a daily basis and know everything about it, why don't you check through my list here? And if you think that I might have missed something or if there's something else that could be added to such a list or to this list, then why don't you comment down below? It would be very helpful helpful for every beginner also reading the comment section down there. And if you are a beginner, there are loads of AUM tutorials online. I would recommend these by these channels. And I would also, of course, recommend mine from my channel. The first feature we're going to look at is the metering feature. And you get to it by tapping up here. You see, normally it would just meter the output of all the apps. But if you tap it, you can actually change what it's metering. So you can even meter directly from channel outputs, individual channel outputs. And as you can see, we have all of the channels represented here. You can also meter the inputs of individual channels. You can do it on mix buses. You can do it on hardware. You can do it on IAA audio bus output. And sometimes I actually do this because these dots here, they don't really do the track justice when it comes to metering. So if you're running a full project like I am usually doing, then you can't really load any extra metering AUV3s or anything like that. So it's, it's really nice to have this feature. The next feature we're looking at is bookmarking a channel. Why would you want to do that? And what is it even? Well, if you look down here in the lower right corner, you can see this thing. And if I tap it, there's nothing in here because we've got nothing bookmarked. I'm going to show you how to bookmark stuff. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to scroll all the way to the end of this project and scrolling through them can be a bit cumbersome, especially if you've got more than this. So it would be nice to have points to jump to instead. And you can do that with bookmarks. So to add a bookmark to a channel, you tap the name under a channel and then press the bookmark. Now it's green and now it's selected. And if we go into bookmarks, we can see it. Now what we're going to do is we're also going to go to the beginning and tap the name and then bookmark it. And we're going to go to the middle, which would be somewhere here. Bookmark that. And now when we want to jump around and skip around in our project, we have skip points, which is so nice. The next thing we're going to look at is the search window. A lot of you hardcore AUM users, you're just going to laugh at this, but you have no idea how often when I live stream, people will say, oh, you can search. Many people will miss this because it is really hidden. So if you do this, we add a channel and we go in here and we open up the audio unit extensions. For instance, you have this also for interrupt audio, but I'm going to do it here. So to get the search window, you drag down and there you go. So if you want to find a specific app like me, I want to find agonizer synth because it's the best bass synthesizer in the world. Well, there it is. And I can now load it. Now, another thing that a lot of AUM users will miss, if I open up an app here, for instance, and I double tap up here, it will auto size to fit the window. Now, if you happen to have a keyboard open, let's double tap again, it will make it small and then double tap again, it will fit it to the top of the keyboard. And I use it all the time. And yeah, I've had so many people during stream say, hey, <laughs> what? You can do that? It is easy to miss. It is. Okay, so now we're getting into MIDI, Bluetooth MIDI. If you want to get to connecting Bluetooth MIDI and get AUM to recognize and connect to a Bluetooth device, you would go up to the upper right corner and then tap settings and then go all the way down and then tap central. And here you would find Bluetooth things. Now that's three taps, but Bluetooth devices are actually just two taps away. So if we tap up here on the MIDI connections and then we tap up here on the upper left corner and there we go, central. Actually, that's three. Uh, do I keep this on the list? Okay, I'm keeping it on the list because you don't have to do any scrolling. 
The next thing is that you can get the MIDI routing list inside this MIDI routing. You can always access the MIDI connection list if you just tap here on the side. So if you wanted to access the MIDI connection list for something like Saturn over here, then you would just tap there and here you could start connecting your stuff. I know it's a bit of a kind of meh feature, but yeah, me personally, I really don't like working with the matrix that much and I'd rather work in lists and which is why I always do that like this. And then I'll just tap up here and then tap there, you know, to, to connect stuff. Now the next thing is also MIDI features. For instance, if I go in here and I go to MIDI control, then I can easily sort all of the MIDI connections I have here and the stuff already mapped to controllers by tapping up here. Right now it shows you all of them, all MIDI connections you have, but if you just want to find the ones that are already assigned, you tap once and you get to the assigned list. And now you can see all of the features that are assigned already. Well, if you wanted to find the unused ones, you just tap again and you find all of the unused connections that you haven't mapped. Makes it easy to find stuff that you might want to map and haven't yet. Switch to AUM. What is this? Well, it turns out that you can actually switch to AUM with a MIDI controller if you map this function. And I have a button here on my controller mapped to that. So if I, for instance, walk out of AUM, go into Agonizer, and then want to go back to AUM quickly, I press here and there AUM is. Now that's pretty neat, right? And you can find that feature if you press in the upper right corner here and then go to MIDI control and then go down to system, switch to AUM. And here you can learn what controller you want to switch over to AUM with. Now, there is another cool feature here because there is one called actions. And here I've got some actions and I'll show you what the actions do. So if I press over here, it loads a completely different session. And if I go to this one, it will load the session I was just in. But if you did any bookmarks or any mappings or any routings or anything, remember to save your projects thing, because as soon as you're loading something, if you have not saved it inside AUM, then those changes are lost. So always save your work before you load anything. Now there is more things you can load. You can actually load instruments and effects by pressing buttons. And the way you set it up is very easy. So if we go into the MIDI settings for any channel, if you've got an instrument or an effect loaded, tap up here to get to the MIDI stuff. And then what you do is you go down until you find the parameters for the thing that you want to map. So in this case, I want to be able to open this Rough Rider plugin with the press of a button. I go to parameters and then I have show plugin. I press there, I press learn, I press over here and now that's learned. You can also set up loading of specific presets inside an app. Now if I tap out of here and I press this one that we just mapped, then it opens up Rough Rider and it's a toggle feature. So it closes it if you press it again. Now there is one more feature. And for that, I'm gonna have to use another iPad. Here I have an iPad mini one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the Bluetooth is on. Why would I want to do that? Well, we're gonna open up AUM and we're gonna set this one up as a kind of a MIDI control and then connect it to this AUM session. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to advertise this iPad as a MIDI control by pressing here, opening up the routing window, press Bluetooth MIDI, and then peripheral. So here we can advertise this iPad as a Bluetooth MIDI controller. So all we need to do is to give it a name, and I've already done that, Jakob's iPad Mini 2 Retina, and then advertise it as a MIDI service. So in order to connect to it, we have to make sure that the Bluetooth is on like that. And then we go into the Bluetooth MIDI settings like this. And this time we do not choose peripheral, we choose central. And here we can see that this iPad is now showing up and here we can connect to it. 
Now that it's connected, we can start using this as a source for modulating stuff inside this iPad. So this could be a controller, uh, it could be an, an LFO or anything else. If I close this down and I open up a MIDI channel and I open up a audio unit MIDI processor and choose Fugue Machine. Now if I want to send Fugue Machine over here, then as you can see, I've got Jakob's iPad Mini 2 Retina Bluetooth right there. And if I want to send that to Agonizer, for instance, then I just have to connect it up like this. So there you go, 11 features that are easy to miss in AUM. I don't know how you think I did, but if I did miss anything or you think I could add anything to this list, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked the video, why don't you leave a thumbs up? And if you didn't like the video, leave a thumbs down. If you want to support the channel, then sharing my videos would be great. Commenting down below. And if you want to support me in a financial way, I've got Patreon and also check out my music. I've got PayPal. There are many ways of doing it. And if you don't want to do any of that, then that's fine too. Now, as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.